In this video, we'll be talking about all the features that I and you and we would like to see in GarageBand iOS on the iPad and the iPhone. But if it's your first time here, you might be wondering, who am I and what is this? Well, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today, where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. And I do that through tutorial videos, tips and tricks and hacks and live streams just like this one. So if that's your kind of thing, consider subscribing. Now, if you do get some value out of this today, uh, if you hit the like button, then that just tells me that these are the sort of videos that you want to see. And yes, we're going to have a bit of fun here today. We're going to be a little bit uh, hypothetical and go out there and just say, you know what, if we had a wish list that we could go out to Apple with and say, hey, Apple, we'd love all these features in GarageBand. What would those features be? And we've got a bunch of stuff in store for you here from both me as well as a bunch of my fabulous viewers here on Studio Live today. I also want to mention and welcome all the folks over at the GarageBand Users Facebook group. So I know a lot of you cross over between Studio Live today here on YouTube and the GarageBand Users Facebook group, but we are multi-streaming live to both locations here today. So welcome aboard to all of those folks as well. Let's talk about the format so that you can understand what we're talking about here and if it's going to be something you're going to like. So we're going to go through my countdown of my personal top 10 features that I want to see in GarageBand. Now, I did do this in February 2018, so more than a year and a half ago, and that'll be linked in the description. So at the end of this one, if you want to go back in the time machine, you can check out my previous video about the same topic and see how closely aligned this one is with that one as well. But our format here today is I'll count down the first five. So I'll go through my first five. We'll then jump into the live chat. So if you're here live, put your comments, your questions, your ideas in the chat. We'll be returning and I'll be throwing those up on the screen and chatting about those at half time. <laughs> I'll then go through my four features. So numbers five through to two. And then I'll look at the responses that I got in advance in the community section here on Studio Live today because the folks that couldn't be here live, I want to make sure they're represented as well. And then we will finish by telling you my number one feature. And we'll see if that aligns with what you and what the viewers here are thinking about as well. So that's our format. That's what's going on. Let's jump in without any further ado and get started on these top 10. So I'm going to go in reverse order. Like I said, I'm going to start at number 10 and then work our way down from there. So number 10 for me is the ability to export to social media. So one thing that has become really apparent is that we can no longer export directly to YouTube, to Facebook. There's no way to get a simple video file out of GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad and send it to YouTube or Facebook. And obviously that now, now includes Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, all of these platforms are embracing video and video has a lot of audio and audio is kind of almost becoming the new video. You know, podcasts are almost the new the, the new YouTube video. Yes, I know I need to start a podcast. Um, sorry, Joey, I'm getting on it. Um, yeah, so that is one thing that I think we need to get back. Now, there's ways around it. And if you want to learn ways around it, here on the channel, I've got a heap of videos about iMovie and about LumaFusion. With the new iOS 13, it's quite simple to export into iMovie. And once again, if you search my name, Pete Johns and iMovie or Pete Johns and export, you're going to find a bunch of ways to do that. But my point remains that if you could just hit a share button and GarageBand, even if it was the old way it did, just a GarageBand logo with the video file and just plays back your audio, that's going to be good enough just to share it out to your, your Facebook friends or to a Facebook group like the folks on GarageBand users. I know they're all nodding furiously because the GarageBand users Facebook group, when we want to share our projects, we have to go to a lot of effort to screen record or to export to iMovie and put some graphics or use something like Visibel, which is a cool app, a visualizer app to get our uh, our video is done so that we can share GarageBand projects. So that's my number 10. Let's come down the list here. Number nine, I want better import and sample management. So bringing in loops and samples and WAV files and MP3s is 100% possible and it's easy enough to do in GarageBand. But the problem is if you want to use samples, so you want to bring something into the sampler, you can bring one sample into the sampler at a time. And then you'd have to create a second sampler track to bring in a second sample. So you want to create yourself a drum kit made up of all the cool drum samples that you want to find and import them. You can do it, but you need like eight tracks to get your kick and your snare and your hi-hat and your cymbals and everything in a row. So 
But that's not exactly ideal. The same thing with importing. Folks tend to get so confused because you can't just open a WAV file. It won't just open in GarageBand. And I don't know why when, you, when you're in GarageBand and you tap a WAV file of a track you want to bring as like a backing track, that it doesn't just say, this isn't a GarageBand file. Would you like me to import this as a WAV file and create a new project? And you go, yes, GarageBand, I would. Instead, it's grayed out. And I get questions on the daily from folks saying, someone sent me some tracks and I can't open them in GarageBand. And I say, are you trying to open them in GarageBand or are you trying to open them as a GarageBand project? And usually we get to the point where, yes, they're trying to open them in and they're grayed out and they can't get to them. So the solution would be a simple option to be able to open a WAV file as a new GarageBand project, dump it in as an audio track. And that's the sort of thing that a lot of other digital audio workstations can support. So yeah, I hope that we see some improvements to the importing and the file and sample and loop management that we have in GarageBand. Let's go to number eight. Number eight is one that I, I know I did mention this in my previous video 18 months ago. We're no kind of closer to this and I think it's a simple thing, but I would love to have track templates. So I would love to have the ability to save a project setup. So I've got a great project and I've got, you know, I've got two guitars pan left and right and I've got my vocals and the vocal chains and everything I have. How cool would it be to just save that out as a template file? So it doesn't save any of the audio, but it's a template file so that next time I'm recording a similar track, I can record using all the same settings. That to me seems like a bit of a no brainer and something that should be pretty easy to do. Apparently not the case. <laughs> now you can do this again, like all of these things, you can do them. There's a way around them with GarageBand. And I didn't mention this at the start, but the reason that I use and like GarageBand is that it is quite simple. And I'm not saying that we want to clutter up GarageBand to the point where it's, it becomes bloated and it becomes full of things that we don't want to use, but we just want a few enhancements here. So I think that's a simple thing that if instead of being a GarageBand project, there was a GarageBand template file, and then I could just have my singer-songwriter template, I could have my rock template, my punk template, and whatever type of song I was producing, I'd be able to get a template that would work for that type of song. I think that would be cool. If you're just joining us here, we're counting down my 10, my 10 biggest features that I want to see in GarageBand, but you will be involved too. So I've got two more to go through here. Then I'm going to jump over to the live chat and chat to folks there to find out what they think we should have in here. And we'll see how much of these match up as well. Uh, let's go to number seven as we're counting down. And this is, this is a big one. And I almost made this higher up the list and it probably should have gone higher up the list. And that is a track view when you're recording an individual track. So if you've used GarageBand, like I have quite a bit, you'll know that if you go to record uh, an individual track, say say an individual, um, individual audio track like for a vocal, and you hit the record button and you're on the track view, instantly it changes over to your microphone view. It's really, really annoying. And if we have some time later, I'll show you, I'll demo some of these things and show some workarounds, but I wanna make sure we get through it all. But you know what I mean if you've used GarageBand. You go to your audio recorder track, you hit record. Same for guitars. You're trying to record a guitar solo and you got that picture of the nice amp on there. And I'm saying, GarageBand, I would actually love to see my track so I can see when my vocals are coming in so I know when to stop my guitar solo, right? Who's with me? Yes, I'm with me. <laughs> but I'm sure other people, again, are virtually nodding their heads because it is a frustrating thing. And it's such a simple thing. Like that code could just be, if select this one thing, yes, no, don't switch. Like I don't need to see my microphone. I know what I've set my microphone options at. I don't need to see them while I'm recording my microphone. I would rather like every other digital audio workstation on the planet, uh, see my actual track view. And yes, I know we're having a bit of fun here. I know you're like, Pete, you use GarageBand and you love GarageBand. Why are you being so see it, so mean? And it's like, well, no, I'm just, I'm just pointing out some things. I will still continue to use GarageBand. It is still good. I still enjoy it and actually embrace some of the limitations and the simple simplification but I'd just like to see some changes in version 2.4 or version 3.0 or whatever's coming around the corner. All right, the fifth and final one and before we jump over and chat to the folks here live is optimizing performance controls. Who, hands up, who loves optimizing performance? I have not come across a single person who loves optimizing performance and nor have I come across any official documentation from Apple about what optimizing performance does. If you're new to GarageBand or you're lucky enough to have never seen the optimizing performance before, what it is, is halfway through a recording a project or mixing or mastering or whatever you're doing, you'll get a little pop-up and a little, uh, little line that says optimizing performance. And depending on the size of your project and the power of your iPhone or your iPad, it will 
go very quickly or sometimes it will go very slowly and it will take a long time and it really interrupts your groove and your flow. Now, the reason what we've worked out, those of us that spend our time obsessing over GarageBand have worked out, is what it's doing there is it's rendering down all of the tracks into AIF files, so just into audio files, so that when you're playing back, it doesn't, it doesn't lose performance. So it's an important thing to do so that it needs to actually do that because it's basically saying we're getting to the end of where the memory and the processing power on this particular iPhone or iPad is going to just crash. So instead of just crashing, we're going to do this optimization so that you can then continue recording, mixing and whatnot. So yes, that is a good thing. And I like that. But what I like is a bit more control. So maybe give us the option to, you know, we need to optimize soon. Yes, no. And then if you say no, and you keep going, and it crashes, well, they're more for you. But similar to what, uh, you know, Windows will do and other things will do, it's like, we desperately need to update this one thing. And you're like, snooze, snooze, remind me later, whatever. But unfortunately, Apple just say, we're doing this. It's happening. I don't care if you are halfway through an epic guitar solo and you're about to melt everyone's faces. This is happening now. We're optimizing your performance. You're going to have to deal with it. So they are my five, bottom five. We'll come back and talk about the top five in a moment. But I want to jump over and say g'day to the folks that we have here live on the stream. So hello to Amarasea is here. Uh, I've uh, Yes, I've said hello. Hello, there you are. Uh, we've got uh, Sam is here live, Sam Ogbonda. And Sam said he was here early for the stream and is very, very rarely here early. <laughs> uh, so let's have a look. We've got Bruce, Bruce Orr is here. Uh, learning a lot from you, buddy. Thank you, my friend. Really appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> here is uh, Tom Rochelle. Hi, Pete. This one's easy. Master channel, for goodness sake. Uh, yeah, so uh, I haven't mentioned master channel yet. So there's a little bit of a tip that it's probably in my top five. Spoiler alert. Uh, hello, Goth Demon 666. Sorry, I have to say a name like that. I can't say, hi, Goth Demon 666 with my lovely lispy voice. Otherwise, it doesn't sound as epic, does it? Uh, Adrian, good to have you here uh, from Wyoming in the USA. Wonderful to, to have you along. Uh, let's see if we've got any questions as we come through. I'll just see. Uh, so Am Amaracia. It says track templates, never thought of that. That's dope. Yeah, so sadly, I'm probably going to give you some ideas of things you didn't know you wanted, and now you're going to feel sadder because now you know they don't exist and you want them. But the cool thing is, Amarasea, is that you can do this. So all you need to do is save it out, just call it template. It will save it as a GarageBand project, but call it template and then, you know, two guitar, rock, blah 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 and then just go in and it's manual we have to delete all the audio but then what you can do is next time you start a project just duplicate that template track and then start with that and that way you've got you know your, your favorite guitars set up you've got your favorite microphone presets set up you're just not spending all that time now some people will say and i agree with this to an extent you want to start with a blank canvas and you don't want to always go in with a template but as i say with everything here try it out do it one way, then do it the other way, and then whatever works best for your work workflow that's going to make you create better music, that's what you should actually do with it. Uh, continue on. Uh, it is uh, it is 7.38 p.m. Mountain Standard Time in the USA. Yes, yeah, so I'm a bit later today. It's the evening time um, over in the US. So, uh, yeah, I've, I had a few things this morning, so it's actually midday for me here, quarter past 12, nearly 12.15. 12, uh, Omar Torres, hello to you. Great to have you here on the channel. Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> it, it, here's an interesting one. Uh, okay, here's the deal. If you can guess who my favorite person in the world is, I'll super chat you $99 US because fun. Um, I think Gary Vaynerchuk's your favorite person in the world, Amarasaya, because I've been stalking you heavily on uh, Twitter. <laughs> And you follow a lot of the same people that I do. So there you go. Uh, hello to Judy Kavanagh, but you don't have to pay me $99 if I'm right. Anyway, Judy Kavanagh is here. Great to have you on board, Judy. Uh, we've got uh, Ulysses Gomezara. Sorry for the pronunciation. We've got Baba. Hello. Hello to you. Great to have you here. Um, now, Martinez says, uh, I really wish GarageBand, oh, by the way, I've been checking out your uh, your YouTube channel, Martinez Official, uh, sharing a lot of cool stuff on YouTube and Instagram, and that is not a plug to go and follow me on Instagram, but you are more than welcome to do so. Just go to Pete John's Instagram. Uh, it's in the description. No, sorry. Sorry, I've got so sidetracked there. I'm not really good at promotion. I always apologize halfway through and then don't even do it properly. Um, I really wish GarageBand had more vocal uh, editing effects like vocoder 
or more auto-tuning features, other extensions you know of. Now, I've got this question a heap lately, and it's on my list of things to do, which is to explore a bunch of different effects. I need to jump in and start exploring more things and more of the vocal recording, because there's things like vocal live, there's things like the, um, what is it, the amplitude, well, that is the amplitude one, uh, there's vo voice rack, FX, which I have, I've just never really used that much. So there's a bunch of voice effects. There's um, Diesa. There's what is it called? Espresso by which I probably need. <laughs> which I probably need, which is by Clevgrand. So there's a bunch of different uh, different vocal effects that I need to start exploring. So short version, no, but uh, yeah, long version is I'm on it. I'm going to start looking at those sort of things. Bruce Orr says, merging tracks helps with optimizing performance issue, at least it does for me. Yeah, 100%. So if you're not aware of merging tracks, what that does is it manually does what GarageBand's going to do anyway. So if you want to preempt the whole optimizing performance, because here's the deal, optimizing performance kicks in because you're running out of performance. And it's usually because you're running a bunch of effects, a bunch of plugins, a bunch of third-party stuff, and GarageBand has to keep up and play all of that back when you're overdubbing or recording new tracks or mixing. So if you've got something down where you're like, this is locked in, I know I'm going with this, instead of leaving it with the amp sim and all the effects and all the other business on there, if you merge it, render it down to a single WAV file, because that's all that GarageBand is doing in the background, and then delete out that original track that had all the processing, or even if you mute it sometimes, it can help. If you want to leave it in there for later, then that is actually going to help you out. So great tip there uh, from you, Bruce. Love it. Uh, hello to Luis Ruiz. Greetings from MX. I'm assuming that's Mexico. That's a very cool, uh, like, abbreviation. I've never actually seen that before. Uh, yeah, I probably, obviously, <laughs> obviously, I don't have a lot of viewers in Mexico. If that is Mexico, let me know if I'm getting it totally wrong as well. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> when are you going to tell me how bad my song is, Pete? Oh, do I have a song that I need to listen to? Um, was that your song, Timber? I'm, I'm sure I listened to and gave you feedback on your song, Timber song. I can't recall. Uh, shoot me a message. Um, send me an email. Let me know if I've, if I've missed something. Thing, it's highly likely. <laughs> so apologies for that. Bubba says labeling all round needs help. Color, font size, especially in timelines and tracks. I didn't have this on my top 10, but now that you mention it, yes, it should be because I complain about the naming conventions. So what you can name is your instrument. You can name your tracks, but what you can't do is change fonts. You can't change colors. You can't change font styles. You can't name sections at all. So you can't even put chorus, verse, pre-chorus in your garage band project so i agree with you bubba uh yeah if i'm going to redo this one i would have to add that in a hundred percent gino turis is here from chicago chai town good to have you here uh peter kim i requested a feature if we can stretch our own loops to a desired tempo it would be great yeah it, this is probably, apart from the vocal recording question, this is another thing that's high on my list of things I need to work out a solution for because the amount of people that email and Instagram message and put comments on my YouTube videos asking this, which is, I've got a loop. It's not an Apple loop. It's just a WAV file. I bring it into my project. It's 120 BPM. All I want to do is make it 110 BPM. Is that a difficult thing to ask? Well, it turns out that yes, it is because GarageBand doesn't use any sort of time stretching and there's no way to actually do it in GarageBand. So there are other apps. There's one called AnyTune, which you can use to change the tuning and kind of change the tempo of things. I haven't worked out a really good solution. So if you, if you know of a good app, a good extension, good plugin, good something that helps you manipulate your wave files, change either the pitch or the tempo, and then be able to bring them in, I would love to hear from you. That's the beauty part of this. Uh, let's continue on here. <laughs> uh, 1999. Nope, it's it's Jung Win from Mamaru. But Gary V is definitely a close second or third for sure. <laughs> 1999. So I, I didn't get the 99.99 because I don't think I would get Jung Win from Mamaru. Mamaru? Mamamu. See, there you go. But yes, Gary V is good too. I have to look that up. There's some homework for me afterwards for that. And yes, it is Mexico. I am glad it is that as well. Uh, we've got Adrian here. Yes, arrangement track is a must. Yes, we do need the ability to have a master track. The ability to control things would be super cool. And Amaris here says, Bubba's suggestion is the best. Yes, I'm loving this. I'm going to come back to this labeling all round. Yes, I'm, I 100% need. And I don't think anyone even mentioned that. We'll jump in and see if anyone mentioned that uh, in the community tab where I also put this question out there towards the end. 
All right. Thank you again for all those that are here live. If you're not here live, well, you're missing out on the fun, but it's okay. I do still love you, as I say every time. And all you need to do is drop a comment. So go down there. The like button's there as well. So you might as well tap click that at the same time but no drop me a comment ask me a question give me your suggestion what do you think do you agree with Bubba should it be labeling do you agree with uh who was it that said the master track Adrian and someone else sorry sorry I've missed I've completely lost your name but yes do you agree with those anyway let's jump back over we're going to continue on we're going to talk about the top five we're going to go five down to two and then we've got the big reveal at the end because I learned you know I've been watching a lot of YouTubers lately and apparently you're supposed to have a tease at, to, to do things at the end I always want to just say what it is just to spite that comment, but I'm not going to. All right. Number five in the countdown is compatibility with GarageBand for Mac, right? Am I right here? So because I'm very actively involved with the GarageBand users Facebook group, and once again, welcome to those that are watching from over on the GarageBand users Facebook group. If you're not a member and you're on Facebook, just search GarageBand users on Facebook and you'll find us over there, a thriving community of GarageBand users that you can engage and interact with. The, what was my point? Yeah, so the compatibility, what you can do, is you can transfer, so you can export a project from iOS into Mac. It'll come into Mac and 90% of the features and things will be supported in there. So you'll, you'll have no problems there. If you want to go back from your Mac to your iPhone or your iPad, you are SOL, which is sort of out of luck. Actually, it's COL. It's completely out of luck because you're not going to be able to do it. The only way to do it then is to start managing things with stem files, which means you have to export everything as an individual WAV file track and then import it back into the track. So the thing is, and here's the problem, that GarageBand on iOS and GarageBand on Mac have, were, were similar, like when GarageBand first started on iOS, but then GarageBand on Mac kind of deviated when it got when Apple bought Logic and then they brought a lot of Logic features into GarageBand Mac, which weren't able to be supported with GarageBand iOS at the time. You could argue that with new iPad Pros and things, they definitely could do. And I know a lot of folks have been saying, it's not that we need more GarageBand features, we need Logic for iOS. Well, that's what we actually need. We don't need GarageBand to become a professional door. We need a professional Apple door that's native in iOS. So either way you do it, we need compatibility between Mac and iOS. Why can't we all just get along? Why can't we? Wh why do we have this format wars between two Apple formats? Anyway, my number four is actually directly related to that because if you caught my last sort of few videos I've been talking about um, exporting stems and exporting WAV files because I've just shared my GarageBand project as well as all the WAV files, so all the stem files, which means the individual tracks of my last project, my song called Hold On. And many of you have been doing remixes, which has been awesome. I love listening to them, not because I like hearing my own music, but I love hearing the take on it. So people doing different things and people implementing things in different ways. And I've learned a heap that I'm going to implement in future tracks by letting other people mix my song. So thank you to folks who have done that. It's been super cool. Keep it coming. If you want to contact me, yeah, I'm on all the socials. Go down in the description. I, I do take usually, you know, 24 to 48 hours to get back to folks, but I will get back to you eventually if you send me an email or if you send me a project to take a listen to. And so yes, the ability to just go in and say, because we don't, because we have these compatibility issues, one button that should just go export a WAV file version of each of these tracks and send it out. And here's the weird thing, optimizing performance does this anyway. So just put an extension on the optimizing performance that says, turn them all into AIF, into uncompressed tracks, audio tracks, and then send them on their way. And then we can just have a nice folder full of WAV files or AIF files or some sort of files that we can then bring into Pro Tools, to Reaper, to GarageBand, Mac, to whatever. And then we can do the same on the way back. So that is something that I think we should actually have. We need a quick drinks break because I'm getting fired up here now. I'm, I love talking about this sort of stuff. It's super fun. So if you are, if you are also enjoying this, then yeah. Uh, hit the like button if you're getting value. And I promise that's the last time I'll say hit the like button. And I also promise that I will never tell you to smash a like button, now, nor will I tell you to smash a notification bell or smash anything, unless you are smashing a guitar over an amplifier in a rage of face-melting guitar solo brilliance in which case I'll make an exception. Let's move on. Number three, we're in the top three now. Let's talk about guitars. Can you and I just have an honest conversation about guitars in GarageBand for just a minute? Yeah, thanks. The GarageBand guitar samples have not 
changed since version one. So when GarageBand came out about eight years ago, they were pretty good. I would say that they were above average MIDI guitar samples. So they're not the worst guitar sounding guitars in the world. I've definitely heard worse sounding MIDI guitar samples. Problem being that everything has moved on. We've got much better processors now. We've got much better samples. We've got third party apps like iSymphonic, like um, a bunch of them. I'm getting them off the top of my head now. Soundbank. Uh, what is that one called? Anyway, uh, yeah, other third-party apps that can bring in some really good quality sounds. Yet the guitar. What have we added in guitar? Well, we added that new wah guitar, which is just one of the other guitars with a wah on it. So, yes, who agrees with me? Who thinks the guitars are awesome and don't need to change? And we don't, yeah, no one's got their hand up right now. Yeah, we, we would love some new guitar sounds. And uh, we've got new other sounds. Like every time a pack comes out and I see 400 uh, new loops, I'm like, okay. And they're like 20 alchemy synth patches. I'm like, okay. And like, and no new instruments. I'm like, okay. So yeah, if like me, you want to see a new instrument, you want to see something new, uh, you want to see uh, garage band guitars. And the one thing I didn't put in here, and this is weird because I think it was a lot of people talk to me about this and a lot of people have this an opinion is additional instruments. And I don't know whether, so people want things like banjo. I would love a banjo. How cool would that be? A ukulele would be super cool. Um, all sorts of different, like har a harmonica would be cool. A saxophone would be cool. Uh, some xylophones and, and metallophones and those sort of things that are not the toy versions. All of these things would be cool. So I do agree. Uh, I just think that there's so many cool things using audio unit plugins now that I don't think that's a priority. So maybe you'd say, well, Pete, shouldn't guitars not be a priority? But no one's cracked a great guitar app that can bring in good guitar. Hmm. Okay, memo, note, Pete, write or no, get a developer to write a great guitar uh, plugin app for uh, iOS AUV3. All right, I'm on it. That'll be coming out. Studio Live Today, guitars, coming soon in 2027. All right. Number two, we're here. We're on the homeward stretch. Uh, so this is effects, sends, receives, and automation. So I've kind of just bundled everything into this. So I, I wanted, and again, I don't know if I want this, but I think I want this, which is the ability to, we've got automation on a track. So in version 2.1, we got volume automation, which is pretty epic. Like the ability to do volume automation on your little iPhone screen in GarageBand, pretty darn cool. Uh, but we don't have panning automation, so you can't do cool left to right panning. We don't have effects automation, so you can't automate reverb, delay, any of your effects. We've only got the regular automation. And related to that is that we don't have the ability to set up sends and receives. So if you're not familiar with sends and receives, what you could do is set up a track that's got no audio, but just has a bunch of plugins on it. So you've got or just one plugin. So you've got a reverb track. And then what you can do is you can send all your, your guitars and your vocals to this one reverb track, but then you can send them at different volumes. So you can say, I want a little reverb on my guitar. I want lots of reverb on my vocal. You can set up all of your sends and receives to do that. So that would be super cool to have the ability to do those sort of things. And most of your digital audio workstations have that. The reason I say, I think I want it, but I'm not sure, is that I don't actually know if that would clutter the screen, especially on an iPhone. You can imagine using it on your iPhone and you've got like, like you do on most DAWs, you can tick which thing you're automating and you've got to tick like eight different effects and whether you are or aren't automating those. And then you've got how many different automation lanes. Like it's, you've got your, it's hard enough to see your automation lane for your volume. Imagine trying to see automation for volume, panning, chorus, reverb and delay all on one little vocal track. I don't know how the implementation would go. So yes, I don't know if I want it, but I definitely think I want it. That is where we're at now. I'm going to come back to number one and there's going to be no surprises here because it's like it's like when you're watching the countdown and you, you, like, of the best songs of all time and they haven't talked about Smells Like Teen Spirit and you're at like number two, you're like, yeah, I know what's coming now. Anyway. So what we are going to do now, we'll jump back over and see if we have any additional questions, comments or suggestions here from the wonderful live audience that we have. And then I'm going to jump over to my community tab over on Studio Live today and take a look at the previous comments we had from folks over there. Uh, Adrian says, compatibility of OS to iOS is a good one. Yeah, there's too many folks that, that run into trouble and I get that question an awful lot. Um, so what do we have here from Louise Rears? Some comment related to USB mics. What do you prefer? 
as in what is the USB mic I use? I use the Samson Meteor when I'm using a USB mic. But that, that being said, I use mainly condensed mics through an interface for most of my recordings. So if that was what you were asking about, um, yeah, uh, what a lot of people use for recording, if you want to just use a USB mic, is you know, the uh, Blue Yeti is kind of the go-to. Um, and there's also a Blue Yeti Nano that's been released now, which actually looks pretty cool. Uh, Samson also make um, the Samson GT something. I should remember that off the top of my head, which is like a interface mic all in one sort of thing, which I've been meaning to try out. And maybe I need to email Samson and say, hey, Samson, send me one. My, my, my viewers want to see this in action. Um, uh, open. So Bubba says open two sources, two scores at once would be nice. Yeah, to be able to have two project so open at once where you can transfer between the two because you have to if you want to copy and paste you have to open up one you have to go to the track you have to copy the bit of audio you want you have to open the other um, being able to switch between them like we can in everything else would be pretty pretty cool Devin Smith, hello to you, my friend over there on the GarageBand users Facebook group. Great to see you. Uh, I'd love to be able to seamlessly work on projects between iOS and Mac. Yes, I think a lot of people would absolutely love to do that uh, as well. Uh, GarageBand, Mr. Rads says, GarageBand should sample audio clips like an 808 crash or a 909 ride. There are some pretty good um, 808, 909 samples. So if you do go into the beat sequencer or you go into the electronic kits, especially that Roland, there was a Roland pack they put out with the TR-808 and the 909 a while ago. So, yeah, jump in on that. Does Pete have a Mac or Windows 10? Pete is a Windows guy. I know. How weird is it? I don't actually own a Mac. I never have, which is bizarre, and people think I'm lying when I say that. But, no, I, I've used iOS. Um, and I have done for about the last seven or eight years, but I do not use a uh, Mac. That may change in the future. I think I need to buy a Mac at some stage. Um, Peter Kim, I think I found a solution. It's called Digistix. It can stretch a certain loop to a desired tempo, and it's AUV3. Ooh, okay. There we go. Dig Digistix. That's going to have to go in my notes here. Uh, I'm going to actually bring up my notes here. I'm legitimately going to type it. Sometimes I say I'll put it in my notes and then I forget about it, but I legitimately want to check that out because this is literally, not literally, but probably the number one question I get from folks is how do we stretch loops in time? Um, Victor Ibels says, uh, is that Victor Ibels MX? So is that Mexico as well? Am I learning that MX is like a Mexico abbreviation. That is so cool. I want to move to Mexico so I can be Pete John's MX. Uh, logic for iOS or iPad OS would be awesome. It would indeed. I would love that. Uh, Judy Kavanagh, just, just a simple thing, but I'd like to see the name of the song I'm editing while the song is open. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that is a simple thing, but it would be a good thing because once you're in a project, you're right. And I've had this problem where I don't know what version number I'm in. So I don't, I've got like two or three versions of a song or a project and I'm like, shoot, did I open version three or version four? And then I have to go back out and then come back in. Yeah, simple thing across the top going, here is your project name. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, so uh, Amaracia says, yes, in export individual tracks, select which tracks exactly, export those tracks individually. Would be, would indeed be mind-blowing. Would be so much fun to have and to see for sure. Uh, banjo would be great. Yes, a banjo would be so cool. I mean, we've got some other cool stringed instruments. And uh, I think I did, did I do a video about a banjo, how to create a banjo type sound in alchemy a while ago? I think I did. Um, it wasn't my idea, but someone gave me the idea and I, I think I did a video on it, losing my mind. Um, let's have a look. We, Victor Ibel says you can record the MIDI guitar, convert it to audio, and then use the guitar amp. Yeah, one of my favorite things to do, and I should have mentioned that when I was talking guitars, is that if you don't love the guitar sound, what you can do is you can merge it into an audio track and then you can move it over into a guitar amp track and you can even use like third-party amps like the Stark Amp Simulator or your Ampler Tubes and you can basically just send the, the raw guitar sound, just the clean guitar sound, and then do all your amplification, your effects, your distortion, your pedals in another app or sorry, using another app. So that's definitely a great, great tip. Love it. Um, and yes, it won't sound as good, but it will help you customize totally. It does give you a much better one there. Um, got a comment here. I'd love to have sections and transport controls. I can use Nano Control Studio and GarageBand on my Mac, but not on iPad. Yeah. The, the plugins. So if you've got a really cool MIDI keyboard or an interface, you can plug in and you can use a lot of the things, which is things like the, the modulation wheel and you can use the, the, um, what's the other one, the pitch bend wheel. Uh, but yeah, you can't use any of your transport controls or any of your knobs and dials and funky things that you do. 
uh we'll continue on here uh got a question here do you do you have do you know any good apps to take out vocals from a song to make an instrumental really tricky thing to do a lot of people have asked me to do a video on this and i've never tackled it because it seems quite challenging um because it is basically the only real way to do it is to chop out that center part of your track and like just leave the side so you using some mid side processing to basically mute out the mid and then just keep the sides in. It makes the track sound a bit weird. The other thing you can do is try and do a cut in the in the EQ around the vocal frequency. Again, unless you've got the individual tracks, there's really nothing you can do to remove vocals and have the track actually sound anything like the original track. Adrian says, my new feature, my new fave feature of Topic is mouse support. So yes, I love mouse support. And if you caught my video from earlier today, I did a, did a demo of how to do, actually how to do an effects track, <laughs> a makeshift hack to make an effects track. Yes, I rhyme, I'm a poet and I didn't know it. But yeah, using a mouse on your iPad especially is really cool. I didn't think, I was so skeptical. I didn't think it would be cool going in. But since I've been using it, it has been awesome. And I actually really love it. And it's great for tutorials and demonstrations because you can see exactly where I'm tapping as opposed to me having to film my finger, my big fat finger on the screen. You can now just see where I'm actually clicking and tapping. So 100% agree. And I probably should have thrown that out there. Maybe we'll finish and I'll, I'll do some positivity and say, here's my favorite things as well. Gino says, Gino Therese says, nylon string guitar, metal guitar, resonator guitar, banjo, uke, blah, blah, blah. You, you rhymed too. I love it. Very, very cool. Um, you can, yeah. So Victor Bells, you can load up instrument samples on the sampler to have more instruments. You can indeed. And I think I mentioned in a previous tip that I would love to have the ability to have a sampler where you can make something like a drum kit. At the moment, every sample is on its own track and you can hit the different notes and it will just be that one sample. The other issue with samples is that they don't, uh, it doesn't adjust pitch. So, it just, well, it does adjust pitch, but it also adjusts the length of the sample. So if you've got a loop or if you've got a longer sample, it will go, duh, 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 duh. you know what I mean? If you've used samples, you know what I mean. Um, all I want is a master channel and vertical mixer sliders. Yeah, the, the horizontal sliders are a bit weird. It would be great to be able to go to just a mixing desk kind of view, uh, like you can in other, in other ones. But yes, I've never really thought about that. But yes, a master channel would be a good thing. Um, and Mr. Rad says, I've been watching the Make a Song series. The song was for, for the birds in March 2018. Yeah, so I actually did that series just after I did the last version of this. So I've, I also have been back in my old videos checking out what I've been doing over there. Um, B Killer 570, your tutorials helped me. Thanks a lot. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I, had, I thought that was a question and then I clicked on it and it was just saying thank you. But that is cool. I still want to give you a shout out for saying thank you. Um, we've got Christopher Chalaro, Yo GarageBand or Logic Pro X. Yeah, so Logic Pro X. It would be cool to have Logic Pro type features on an iOS device. Mm. Would be cool. Uh, Sam says, being able to natively support audio and MIDI stems. Yeah. MIDI. So MIDI support came into GarageBand about two versions ago, but it's only MIDI in. It's very clunky. It doesn't work for a lot of things. It's a little bit, uh, yeah, it's not not a great implementation. So it would be great to have, great to have something better for that. Um, from Tom Rochelle again, I would also love the flexibility in adding and ordering effects on each track. It really limits what you can do there. In adding and ordering effects on each track. So I might have some good news. If you're saying what I think you're saying, you can actually change the order of tracks in GarageBand. If you're meaning just putting like the reverb before the reverb before the cor chorus and the chorus before the effects and then the, uh, the EQ and the compression in different places. If that's what you're meaning, uh, let me just find the video that I did because I'm pretty sure, and if I haven't, this will be my next video because if I haven't done it, I should. If we just search, we'll search YouTube for Pete John's effects order. Surely I did one for changing the order of effects. Change plugin order. Here we go. We'll jump over to my results in my screen here. So yeah, this one here, how to change the order of plugins in GarageBand iOS. So if you search Pete John's effects order, you'll get that one because what you can actually do over on the side there, you can actually slide, uh, there's an edit button and then you can slide the effects up and down. So you can actually edit the effects that way to actually be able to um, yeah put different effects in different orders. So 
yeah, if that's what you mean, then yeah, that might be our first bit of good news for the day <laughs> is that you can actually change the order of your effects. So I, I do that all the time. Um, I've changed the order of things like reverb. Some, and sometimes you want the EQ before you put compression on. Sometimes you want it afterwards. Depends on what you're feeling at the time and the way you prefer to do things. Uh, yes. Uh, and Adrian is just convincing me to get a Mac. Uh, yes, mine has lasted 11 years, I know. They seem to be pretty solid and uh, able to stay together. I'm going to have to scroll down here. If I'm missing questions or if I'm missing comments, I apologise. Um, I'm not going to be able to uh, to get to everything. Um, frankly, frankly, the boy, uh, XD or Smiley Face Closed Eye, whichever it's going to be, I beat GarageBand needs to add automation for other uh, besides the volume. Yes. And that was number something that was number, you, you probably weren't here live at the time, but that was one of mine right up there. I can't even find the number it was. It was one of mine in my top nine that we've been through already. hundred percent agree to. Um, I've got a question from Karen Woods. What's the best interface to use on iPad Pro for acoustic guitar? Jess joins us. Sorry if you've already answered. Uh, no problem at all. And we can actually answer this because we've got a little bit of time and then we're going to go back onto the rest of the stream. Um, it really depends on budget and quality you're looking for. The ones I go for, and they're sitting up over there, you can probably see the range that I use there. So you can very, very vaguely and blurrily in the background see the Behringer UM2. That's a great budget entry level one. You can pick those up for around $40. Up on top there is the Steinberg UR12. It's about a $100 interface. That's my go-to for iOS because that has a great mic preamp in it and it also has a quality interface for a guitar. If you want to use a direct quarter inch in, we've got the Focusrite Scarlett 2R2, which is not a bad option as well there. And if you want more channels down the bottom there is the Steinberg UR44, which actually has four separate uh, preamps and inputs. So if you want to record stereo pairs and things like that, then you can go with something like that. If you go to studiolivetoday.com slash gear, that's my gear guide, and that has links to all of the things that I recommend specifically for mobile creators and recording. So I hope that helped you out there, Karen. Um, let's continue on here. Victor Ebels says, the things I haven't found out how to do are a good manual auto-tune for vocals and how to eliminate background noise. Really useful when recording high-gain guitars. Yes. So I've got, uh, I don't have a solution for, I still haven't also found a great tuning plugin in terms of actually being able to do manual auto-tuning, which means actually selecting which note you want to tune to. So if you, if you haven't done a whole lot of, um, of vocal tuning, what, what auto-tune does is it, it automatically detects what note it thinks you're singing and then it moves it to that note. But if you've ever used auto-tune and you've been sort of wavering between notes, sometimes it'll select the wrong note and it sounds terrible. So a good tuning app is one that you can actually tune. And if you hit a wrong note, you can actually tune it to exactly the note. You can go in and have some manual control. So if that's what you're looking for, I haven't found it either, but uh, let's us keep looking. The one for noise reduction, and again, I'll search here, is one called, oh, what is it? Oh no, now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna space on it. Someone help me with my favorite, my favorite noise reduction, Bruce Free. This is a problem. It's from Clev Grand, and because they're a Swedish, I believe Swedish company, uh, all of their apps are called very interesting names. So I recommend this one. It's not super cheap. I think it's about 10 or $20 to buy, but it's an AUV3 plugin called Bruce Free. And here is the video. If you search my name, Pete John's Noise Reduction, you'll be able to see this review of my of the noise reduction plugin, Bruce Free, which is my go-to. And it's really, really cool. I've used it on a couple of different tracks now. And if you've got background room noise, if you've got like fan noise, it won't work on absolutely everything. I haven't tried a lot on guitars, but that would be a cool thing to try it on with that background hiss and that hum you get from a guitar amp. Might be a good one to try it with. But yeah, check out my video there, Victor. And that should uh, give you some tips about how to remove your background noise. Gabrielle Patrick says, is there a standalone VST app that makes sound design like Serum VST for iOS? There's a but so iOS uses AUV3, audio unit version three plugins, as opposed to VST. Um, so not VST specifically, but I'm I'm not into the whole sort of sound design world. So I'm probably not the best one to ask, but let's throw it out there. Let's whack my microphone. Let's throw it out there. And if anyone does have any suggestions, please uh, let us know here. Um, and if you want to shoot me an email, if you've got more specifics on that, Gabrielle, uh, my details, email address, all of my social media contacts are down in the description of the video. 
Uh, Victor Bells, yes, MX is indeed Mexico. There you go. I've learned something new today. I love learning new things. That's very, very cool. Um, we're continuing on here. Good morning. Uh, good morning to you. Pradeep Bind uh, in, in India. Hello to you. Uh, hello. We've also got Connie Matos joining us live here as well. Um, we're going to continue on. We've got any other questions before we go? Uh, question from Johan Olivier is, is there a free sax plugin that works fairly well? There isn't that I've come across the only sax plugin, and you know where I'm going here, is my favorite sax plugin, which is called Sensual Sax. Uh, you have to be very careful when you say that. Uh, it's a very cool plugin. If you search on my channel again, search Pete John Sensual Sax, you'll see a review of that. Uh, if you really want good quality saxophone sounds in your projects, and I'm not sponsored by them, and I don't get any kickbacks for saying this, I highly recommend checking it out because it looks cool as you can see there. And if you check out my review of it, you'll find out that it sounds super cool as well. Oh, we can hear it. Let's let's have a quick listen. The only problem with the scent, yeah, there you go. Um, and I say the only problem with it is that it sounds too fun and you have so much fun playing with it. So there we go. Uh, we'll come out here. All right, I think we're good. I think we're back on track. Uh, thank you though. It, it is always good. It's a good problem to have too many questions and too many comments in a live show like this. So I do appreciate it. Again, thank you for everyone who's here live with us. Thank you for everyone who is here uh, on the replay leaving your comments. Appreciate you being here as well. Let us now jump over because there's one thing I wanted to do before we finish up here, and that is reveal the uh, comments that we got here from folks who are over on uh, my community tab. So if you're not aware, uh, I do a lot of polls and I post pictures, behind the scenes pictures, uh, ask questions, give comments on the community tab here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook and other places if you want to follow me and find out all the things that go on behind the scenes. But a great place to actually keep engaging and to chat with other people is on the community tab here. So to get to it, over here on my page, you can see here we've got the home page, which is the one over here on the left, which is where you'll go to if you go to watch studiolivetoday.com or if you just click on my channel or tap on my channel that's where you'll go to studio live today's home you can then look at all of the videos sorry this is like a tutorial how to watch youtube um yeah what is that simpsons thing it's like how to buy action hero man episode um yeah so all my videos are there but over here the community tab this is one where there's a lot of cool stuff that goes on so what i've asked today is here's my poll and yes you can see the results there are in let's just zoom in on those suckers can I zoom? Yep, there we go. So I asked, what feature would you most like to see added to GarageBand? And winning by a landslide is a master track or bus. I only gave four options, though, that other is not doing so well. So I did master track or bus. Automation on effects and panning was up there at number two. More instruments. I asked to comment which ones. Send and receive buses for effects. So the master track, the master bus is definitely number one. With the viewers there, let's jump through and see some of the comments that we had here just for folks that may not be able to join us here live. So we had Mobile Metal, who would like some drums, more steered towards metal. Yeah, they're not quite there. We've got Anders, who's our hard rock drummer, but we don't have any metal drums there. And he's recommending, well, he's saying there's a plugin called Drum Session, which I haven't tried. Apparently it's $10. Uh, if anyone else has tried that, let us know what you think and if it's worthwhile checking out. Um, changing time signatures within a, within a song. I was surprised. I, I didn't throw this out there and uh, no one else has thrown this out there either. But yeah, time signatures and tempo changes are ones that have come up a lot before. I didn't put them in here mostly because most of my music is so straightforward. I don't change time signatures or tempos. But yeah, managing multiple time signatures or tempos in GarageBand projects would be kind of cool to do. Uh, we've got obviously another drum fan here, able to ability to use ghost notes. So ghost notes are like those little small taps of a snare or those small little hits that are not quite a hit, but give you that impression of like a real drum kit when you're programming drums. I agree. That would be kind of cool. Uh, George Elliott, hello to you, George. Would love to see some ukulele and maybe some more classical piano sounds. I agree. That would be cool. Uh, Chinton, hello to you, Chinton. Some Indian classical instruments would be great. We've already, yeah, we've got so many, um, like we've got all the, the Chinese, the Japanese instruments, no Indian instruments. There's a massive population of folks in India that are using GarageBand. Why have no Indian instruments? Anyway, um, so Amarasia says yes. <laughs> he did give some more down here. It's okay. Um, 
So Jade Star, I put uh, other because all of the above are not difficult. Yeah, uh, it, it is. So GarageBand is what Jade said is it's leaving GarageBand behind a little bit from other DAWs, and I agree. Uh, yeah, they probably need to step it up a bit. Uh, time signature thing. <clears throat> so Amorousy is talking about the time signature thing, and he's got a cool idea here. And it's probably I'm probably sharing it with the world now. Someone's going to go steal it now. Uh, where professional musicians record their instruments to be used as virtual instruments, and they can be used professionally like any other in GB. Yeah, that's that's totally a cool thing. And I think having sound packs and having things that are specifically for GarageBand or, or being able to be used with GarageBand would be cool. George K, uh, yes, I went with send or receive buses, but all of the above plus, and George has given a great list here. I don't have time to go through each individual one. A lot of them cross over with what we've talked about, but he's got some great ideas there as well. Go to the community tab and read up on all of those. Uh, Stevie Quest, says a better way to sample old records, adding in your own drum kits. Yeah, sampling, and then unable to change the sample rate as well. Um, so, yeah, sampling actually came up surprisingly often. A lot of people are looking to do more uh, sampling in their songs, so to be able to sample other instruments, to be able to sample and bring in their own samples and have more flexibility around that. And when I asked about the keyboard instrument, I got a heap of people saying, yes, I want to be able to uh, to be to sample. Um, yes, Amorazia said, yeah, he picked a other being all of the above. Yep, agree. Um, yes, it does need to be all of the above there. Um, so that is where we're at. Now, it's no surprise here, and I'm going to reveal it now, that my number one, uh, I'll just remove Amorazia. So my number one is a master track. Yes, that's right. Drum roll. No, I don't even need a drum roll. Number one is a master track. Why? Well, because we need one, <laughs> because there is no master track. Now, what do we mean by this? If you're new to GarageBand or you haven't used GarageBand much, why do we need a master track? Well, in every other digital audio workstation, all of your tracks feed into one master track or master bus or stereo bus or two bus. It's got a bunch of different names. But the beauty part of that is that you can then adjust your overall volume. You can then add effects on your master track and you can do things like automation and EQ all on your master track. It just gives you a whole lot more control over what's happening in your song now there are workarounds there's a great little hack that you can use where if you add fx to a song then you can actually go into the effects and you can change it so if you if you search again i'm telling you to search a lot of stuff here but if you go to pete johns if you go to youtube and you search pete johns master volume then what you're going to find is that i actually have a video which is how to change the master volume so there is a little workaround, a hack there about how to change the master volume in GarageBand. It's super simple to do. And yeah, you can actually do that without any problems. However, it's only volume. So you still can't add effects. You still can't do other things. Other solution is export the whole thing, bring it back in as a stereo wave file. So export it as a wave file, import it as a wave file to a new project, and then do everything on the track. And that's how I do my mastering. So the other video you would have seen over there about mastering in GarageBand, that's what that's all about, exporting and importing and bringing it back in. So yeah, so that that is what, uh, what I wanted to actually go through here. Um, that is pretty much going to do it. I did want to say another big thank you. I'll jump back over and see if we have, we do have eight more minutes here officially. I'm going to have a drink and we'll see if there's any other live comments here. I want to remind you though, to go to Studio Live today, not Studio Kids today. This is my uh, daughter's custom mug. I don't, I don't actually sell these, but I do sell my Studio Live today mugs and t-shirts. I'm not wearing it. I'm wearing Everclear over at studiolivetoday.com slash merch. Um, so you can go check that out as well. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll come and finish off here. I'm going to I'll come and see if we've got any other questions or comments here before we finish off. Um, scrolling down here, Mr. Raz, GarageBand should add tuner for when you tuner for when you play virtual drummer. Virtual drummer? Tuner. Oh, I was into tune the drums. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Um, I think that would be a really, really good one. Um, Amaracia says I use the FX hack all the time. Yeah, it, I use it on basically every track because what I tend to find is I get excited and I start pumping up the volume of all my tracks and then over time they all get too loud and I have to start uh, dialing them back or I can jump into the FX track, turn down the master volume and I'm good to go without having to do all of that individual track stuff. So that is all pretty cool. Um, and Amorosia says, I would also love a tuner for voice in GB, being able to detect what key you're singing in a bit of advanced, but would be crazy. Yeah, there's got to be an AUV3. Is there an AUV3 sort of plug-in for tuning, auto-tuning, or some sort of Melodyne type? I don't know. We'll have to find out. 
Um, so St Stan Low Crickets 888 just joined in MIDI CC controller volume and others. Yeah. So yeah, we've talked about MIDI. We've talked about the implementation of MIDI not being great for GarageBand. You can import MIDI files, but and you can use MIDI controllers to send things like your actual notes, your sustain, your modulation wheel, and your pitch. Um, wheel, but you can't send anything else and you can't receive anything out of GarageBand because GarageBand doesn't send anything back. So that's a little bit of a challenge there. Um, all righty. I think we are coming close to an end. So we're going to finish off there. I'm sorry if I missed a bunch of people with a bunch of comments. It was flying by here today and I was trying to keep up and trying to, uh, trying to catch up with everything that everyone was saying. <laughs> Goth Demon 666. Do you drink Everclear, Pete? No, I don't. I drink uh, coffee, water, and beer in that order. And at that time of the day, start with coffee, have lots of water to hydrate, and then finish with a delicious uh, crafted brew. That's the way I roll. Alrighty, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, I hope you found this a little bit fun and enjoyable. If you have your own uh, ideas, if you're watching on the replay and you've got comments, and you're like, I can't believe they didn't mention blah, 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 then put blah, blah, blah down in the comments or any questions that you have about recording in GarageBand. Let's do the 60 seconds of Pete doing his promotion because everyone loves that, right? No one just ends the video now, but... Anyway, uh, so yes, you can go to studiolivetoday.com. Join the mailing list there. If you're still an email kind of person, join the mailing list. I do send out emails sometimes. I don't spam you, but I do send out emails with exclusive stuff and different things and bits and pieces all the time. Uh, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on Facebook. Thank you to the folks in the GarageBand users Facebook group. This was a bit of an experiment streaming live over there and over here at the same time. That was very, very cool. Um, and yeah, if, if you do want to engage with me, as I said, all of my contact details are down below, but most of the stuff you can do is at studiolivetoday.com. Oh, including my gear guide. I did mean to mention that. So if you are looking to buy some gear, you can support me and support the channel by going to studiolivetoday.com com slash gear. There you go. That wasn't super painful, was it? That was just 60 seconds out of your life. Right. We're going to finish up there. Thank you. Have a fantastic rest of your weekend and a great week of creating folks. And I will see you next time.